In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make an encyclopedia app for MIT App Inventor 2. This video was created as the solution to a coding challenge for Technovation. In this app, the user can choose from a list of people or events or places, whatever you would like it to be, to learn more about them. So for example, if I wanted to make a list of women scientists, I could click on Mary Curie and then get more information about her. And then I can go back and then choose another female scientist and learn more about her as well. So I've opened up a new project here and I'm going to start with a designer panel. First of all, I need a label, so I'm going to drag that over from user interface onto the screen. And in the label, I'm going to put the text, who do you want to learn about? So that's just going to show up as text on the screen so that the user will understand what they should do next. Next, I need to put a list view and that will allow us to show multiple different people that our user will be able to learn about and that they can each be displayed in a separate element that can then be clicked on and then we can trigger an action in response to that click. So I'll drag the list view over here. It appears as three horizontal bars. And when I drag it on, it just looks like one solid bar. Um, that's because we haven't added anything to the list view yet. But once we add elements to it, then they'll show up on separate lines. So that's all we need in the designer. Let's go over to blocks just by clicking this button over here. To start off, I'm going to create a couple of lists. And lists are just a structured way of storing values together. So first of all, I'm going to create a variable with a list of the names of people. And your app might be different. Um, instead of names, you could maybe have events or locations, um, whatever works, but mine will be names. So I'm going to go to variables and then choose initialize global name two. This is what we use when we want to create a variable that can be used anywhere in the screen. So I'm just going to call this names. And then to make it a list, we want to get a list block, and that's over here. And I'll do make a list. Now the way this works is just next to every open puzzle piece, uh, we can stick in a text block with the name of another person. So to start off with, I'll just click on text, drag one of these over. And then for my first person, I'll put Ada Lovelace. And then you'll just want to continue to do this for however many entries you want your encyclopedia to contain. I'm just going to have five. Um, you can do anywhere, maybe in the range of three to eight. To get more than two entries here, you click on this blue gear. And then you just need to drag over one of these down here. And that will snap into place and you'll see there's another spot opened up. So again, you click and drag on this and then put it there. I'm going to have five, so I'll put those in. All right, so we just need to fill out those remaining ones with the other names. So I'll go ahead and do that. I want to do a similar thing to create a list of all the descriptions and this is going to be the more detailed information on each of these people that will be showed to the user when they click on it indicating they want to learn more about it. So this is going to be a similar type of list so again I'll go to variables um, and I'm going to call this descriptions and then I'm going to make a list by going over to list and again choosing make a list and these will be again text boxes um, but it's going to have a longer description. So I'm going to bring over one of those um, and then I've already written descriptions of these and put them in a document that I'll just copy and paste, um, but you can write your own descriptions for whatever you choose, maybe between two to six sentences. So I've copied and pasted those, so I'm just going to put them in here. And then I'll do the same thing for all the other people. Now remember that we have that list view on the first screen, but we didn't put anything in it yet. And we want to make sure that once the screen opens, we can populate that list view with these names so that they'll all show up there. So because we want to do that, as soon as the screen opens, we need to get a block under screen to detect when that happens. So I'll click on screen one and then choose one screen one dot initialize. And at that point, we want to set the elements in the list view. So I'll go to list view one and choose set list view one dot elements two. And this just takes a list, which we already have. So I'm going to mouse over in names, and then two things should pop up, one saying get global names, and one saying set global names to. This one we use if we want to change names, and then get we use if we want to access it. And we're not changing it here, we're just accessing it so that we can put its values into that list view. So I'm going to drag this one down here. 
Now we want to trigger an action in response to the user clicking on one of the elements in the list view. And what that action is, is that we're going to open up a second screen that will display the more detailed information about the person that they chose. To detect when they click something in the list view, there's just going to be a block for that. You can go to list view one and choose when list view one dot after picking. This means after the user has picked one of the options. And then we want to open another screen and that would be under control here all the way down at the bottom. And there are two blocks that allow us to open a screen. We want to choose the second one here because this allows us to input a start value. A start value is how we convey information across screens. And once we open that second screen, it's important that we tell it who was the person and what was their corresponding description so that we can then display that. So I'll bring this down. We also need to put in the screen name, which is at the name of the screen that we're going to. That's important because if we have a complex app with multiple screens, we want to make sure it's sending it to the right one. So to do that, that's just going to be a text block and I'll get that here. And I'm just going to call it screen two. That will be the default name once we create the second screen. Now the start value is a little tricky. Um, what we want to do here is pass in both the name of the person and the description for them. Because we can only put in one start value, we have to kind of stick those values together into a list. So we're going to create a list that just has two elements. The first is the name and the second is a description. And then I'll show you later how we're going to be able to extract those values individually from that. So because we're making a list, we're going to get that make a list block again. And then the first one is just going to be the name of the person that they selected. And we can get that by looking at what they chose from the list view. So if we click on list view one here, then it's going to be list view one dot selection. That represents the name of the person that they chose. So I'm going to put that in the first one. Now for the second element here, we want this to be the corresponding description. Um, and this is where we're going to use something called an index. An index is the position of an element in an array. And so the way that's going to work is that we're going to look at the person they selected from the list view, and we're going to check to see at what position they occur in the names list. And then we're going to find that position and find the corresponding description in our descriptions list. So for example, if we look at Alice Ball, Alice is at position number three here. So we would figure out that they picked Alice from the list view, then we would find that Alice is the third person in the names list, and then we would get the third description from our descriptions list, which is about Alice because we put them in the same order. So then what we need to do here is to pick out the correct description from our description list based on the index of what they selected from the list view. To do that, we're going to use this block that's called select list item list index. This allows us to select a particular element from a list based on its index. So we're going to pull that down here. The list that we're picking from is our descriptions list because we want to give back a description. So our item that we want to give is going to be in our descriptions list. So I'll mouse over descriptions and just like we did with names, I'll get this get global descriptions block. Then as the index, there's a handy way to do this because the list view, in addition to returning a selection, it also has the option to get the index of the selection in the list view, which is the same as its index in names because names is just directly what we put into the list view here. So I'll go to list view one and choose list view one dot selection index and bring that here. So now let's create that second screen. I'm gonna click on this add screen button up here and then I'll just leave it as a default screen too. If you want, you can change the screen name to something else, but if you do, make sure that's reflected in what you refer to it as down here. So I'll click OK, and then it will take a few moments, but that should pop up. Now getting to the designer here, we'll want two labels, one that's going to show the name and one that will show the description. So I'll bring over two labels onto here. And then we're not gonna set the text for these in the designer panel because that would require that we know already what we're gonna put in there, and we don't. We're gonna to have to figure it out based on what that start value was that we passed onto the screen. So I'm not gonna change the text that's in those for now, but I am gonna change the name of the labels, and that's because once we refer to them in blocks, it'll be easier to tell which one corresponds to the name and which the description. So with label one selected here, I'm gonna click on rename, and then I'll call it name. And then for label two, I'll do the same thing, but call it description. 
Now I just need a back button so that once the user is done reading all about their person, they won't get stuck on the screen and they'll be able to go back to the first screen. So I'll bring button over and then I'm going to change the text to say back and that's just going to require scrolling down here and where it says text, I'll put back. Alright, so getting to the blocks, we need to set the text in those labels and we do that as soon as the screen opens. So just like we use this block on the other screen, we can just click on screen 2 and do when screen 2initialize and then we want to set the text in those labels. So I'll go to the label and get a block that allows us to set the text, which is just set name dot text to. And now if you remember in that start value list, it had two elements. The first was the name and the second was the description. So to get the name out, we want to access the first element in that list. And there's a list block that will do that for us. If we go here, we can choose select list item. This is the same thing we used on the previous screen. So we can use that here and our list is going to be our start value because that was the two elements list. And we can get that from control, scrolling all the way down, here's get start value. And the index is one. App Inventor has one base indexing, which means it starts counting at one and then two and then three, etc. Some languages start at zero. To put in the index, because it's in the first position, I want to put a one there. So I'll just go to math and then choose this one and put in one. Now I want to do pretty much the same thing, but just for the description. So I'm going to click on this and do copy and paste just with command C and command V. You can also right click on this and do duplicate. And then I'll just change two things here. First, instead of name, this is going to be description because we're changing the text in the description box. And then I'll make the index two because the description is the second element in our list. So to do here is to code the back button so that once it gets clicked on, it will actually bring us back to the other page. So I'll choose button one and then do when button one dot click, meaning when the button is clicked, then we want to return to the previous page. So I'll go to control and scroll down to open another screen. This time we don't need the one with a start value because once we get back to that first screen, it doesn't matter what person we had looked at previously. We're just going to show the same thing as we did before. So I'll do open another screen and then for screen name, I'll just put screen one and that's going to be in a text block here. So I'll just put in screen one. Alright, so congratulations, you finished it. Go ahead and test it out, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.